Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette and this is Board Game Inquisition, where we're here to offer you insight and information about the board games you might want to have in your collection. So, how do you feel about becoming a painter? Maybe enhancing your skills and learning from a true master? Well if so, here's five things I think you need to know about Kanajua, Kanagawa, but not to be confused with champions of Kamagawa. What's this game all about? Well, in Kanagawa, you're a painter in the Great Bay of Tokyo, and you're studying under a master, one whom you're particularly eager to please. And you do this by following his instructions, by enhancing your studio, and by painting subjects that you're interested in. On a whole, this game is incredibly chill and very easy to engage with and have fun with. It kind of reminds me of a game like Takedo, where the game is more about the journey than the final outcome. Thing two, mechanics. This game focuses on set collection in its entirety. You'll start the game with one skill in play and two paint pots. And then at the start of each round, you're going to draft cards to add into your tableau. Now these cards have two sides to them, um, the left and the right hand side, not the back and the front. And one portion will be a painting that you might want to put into your print, or the other then will be a piece you might want to add to your studio. The ones that go in your print are going to have particular requisites, so they'll need particular colour paints. The ones that go in your studio simply tuck in with others and they'll often give you abilities like additional paints or the ability to move your paint pots, stuff like that. Now the drafting part sounds easy, however what happens is at the start of each round one um, card will be placed out at the top of a row for each player and you can choose to take that right away. However if you pass a second card will be added to the row and eventually a third if you pass again. Now the issue is if you pass and your opponent doesn't they'll get to choose exactly which row they want to pick cards from. So you can choose to kind of get more cards but have less control over what they are um, and that's kind of a tough decision you're probably going to have to make a few times. Um, now how you win? Well you're going to get victory points and these will come from achieving particular goals that are laid out right at the start of the game and are open to everybody. So for instance, if you have three trees in your, in your print, um, that's worth three points and you take the gold card correspondingly. This continues as well for having people, for having buildings, for having animals, all in your print. There are also some bonuses as well for things in your studio. Now that all sounds very straightforward, but the problem is that these goals are tiered and you can only ever have one. Hmm. And the problem is that, so let's say you have three trees in your painting and that is worth three points. But there is also two more in this tier. So if you have um, four trees, you'll get four points. If you have five trees, you'll get seven points. And you can only ever have one. And also you can only claim one when you have that exact number of well, trees in this case in play. So if you have three trees in play and you elect not to pick three trees, um, for the bonus you can never use it again, you could only go forward. And did I mention that everyone's competing for these goals? <laughs> um, it's tough work. So the winner is the person after um, 11 cards have been put into play in your print. Um, and then you tot up the points from all of these bonus tiles um, and also from any points you might have on your cards or in your studio. On a whole, this set collection game is one that should be really boring, right? <laughs> um, you know, you're, you're just collecting sets, but the addition of the drafting portion here is very, very clever. But I think what really makes this stand out is that whole kind of the gold tiles that you have to collect and how you have to decide whether you want to stay in for longer or cut and run now and also having to race your opponent. Um, I think this makes this game stand out in a way I feel like it really shouldn't. Thing three, what's this game like on the table? Well, it's got a very, very small footprint and to be fair, it looks fairly unassuming. It takes about 25 minutes for two of us to play and it's got a really outstanding rule book. Replayability wise, this comes from the fact that you're drafting your cards and also depending on what goal you're gonna wanna work towards. This is definitely a game you'd be happy to play again and again. Thing four, how does this game look and feel? 
maybe a small game but I think the artwork in it really packs a kind of silent punch um it's very very endearing it certainly draws you in you just you just need to look at the box art really um inside in the game itself you get a little bamboo map for placing out all your drafted cards which is really nice um and you also get some teeny tiny paint pots as well to represent where your paint has been used um and when I first saw these I thought this screamed a little bit of being overproduced um, and unnecessary items in the game but the truth is I kind of enjoyed them the more I played with them. There's also a really really lovely insert to keep everything nice and safe inside the box. On a whole the component quality here is pretty incredible and the tactile nature of the game really immerses you in the world of the artist. Thing 5. Is this game any good? Well Kanagawa is the kind of game I fell in love with from the cover. Like, it's kind of beautiful and very attractive but I was very worried about how much you know depth of gameplay was actually going to be available here and considering the designer is Bruno Cathala I, I probably shouldn't have been worried at all but on the one hand I am kind of right this game is definitely aimed at new players it's very easy to teach it's easy to explain and it's quick um, and it's very kind of interactive and tactile this game is great because you can point to different things to people to explain the game. It's kind of all there in front of you. Um, and it's the one I would definitely be introducing to new players. Now, regardless of the fact that this makes a great gateway game, there's more to this game than just matching symbols. Um, the drafting portion is deviously clever in the sense that you can draft more cards each turn but they need to have a place to go and since you can only have 11 in your studio before the game ends you often have to decide do I want to speed the game up now and try to get it towards an end? Am I already ahead? Or do I want to add more things to my studio to have bigger later turns? Um, those multi-use cards are just are just sharp. They're <laughs> I think it's the best way to put it. They're just sharp. They're they're right on the money, um, and they're they they force you to change your plans quite a bit depending on what ones come up. Um, the second big thing is the fact that those kind of gold tiles and how you acquire them is heart wrenching sometimes as you're trying to figure out how you can maximize the most out of your studio without overloading it with too many other things while also trying to beat your opponent to it. This is the kind of the game that when I finished playing it I felt like oh I need to try a different strategy next time or I want to try it this way and I think those are definitely the finest type of games. Do I think you should have Kajanawa in your collection? Well this game does a very special role which is I think it's both a great introductory game for new players but also one that seasoned gamers can enjoy. That makes it kind of the ideal game to play with new people and nobody has to feel overwhelmed and nobody has to feel bored and I think that's a pretty special feature. But beyond that this game is fun, it's relaxing, it's satisfying and it's one that I don't think gets enough recognition. You've been watching Board Game Inquisition. For more authentic board game reviews why not like or subscribe to the channel so you can get updates about my latest videos. Or if you've got any comments or queries you'd like to make about Kanagawa please leave them in the comments below. I'd really like to hear from you, it'd be cool to hear your opinion on it. And until next time I'll be here playing games, asking questions and of course perusing my collection. Take care everybody.